Pilgrim locked in here with the Caspian and the Asuri, the double guitar play. Yeah, coming that's out. something you don't see that often. You know, usually if there's the Asuri, they're pairing it with another sword legend, somebody else that has like pretty consistent confirms, guaranteed two hit combos, yeah. just so that way you can piece together your overall team combos. Katars, you've got like quick single hit versus quick single hit. You're mm -hmm. like piecing things together out of just like found Legos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, and that's what, and, the, and what you described, while well, sounds very messy, right, and it can be super haphazard, it's also very exciting when you make a, basically a work of art out of completely random things, but going into game number one here, uh, the Legos just seem to be falling apart. Uh, Elzo and Yuki are down, a stock apiece, and the red team looks to be taking center control over Shipwreck here as Elzo's going in with the Gauntlets, and that Cider does hit DB, but no stocks yet for the blue team. Yeah, they're they're working on it, but the problem is like the most damaged character that they've got on the field is that Undertaker. Oh, he's got a decent chunk of defense on there. Oh no, and Yuki going down again. Elzo with the save oh, just in time. Yuki no. trying to go for the save, doesn't end up paying for it. Unfortunately, Elzo down <laughs> on final stock. I'm sorry. DP just waltzed in to the chainsaw, <laughs> and it didn't lose the stock for it, but there he goes. Man, Elzo's got to be feeling slaps. a little bad about that one. They ended up losing that stock trying to save Yuki's, and Yuki has been on the second stock, but hasn't done anything on it, right? At, at a certain point, you go, you save the stock if it looks good, but if you lose your own stock saving it and the other person gets nothing off of it, you're just losing twice Oh, no, much. the double-team combo. They caught them both. Oh. Unfortunately, a grab in there. Those can only hit one target. So they split and didn't get the full damage on both players, but that was a ton of damage in the meantime. Oh, and that is an Asuri Cascan special there, going in for the grab at the very end, post tossing out the bomb. Oh, once again, hitting him. That side signature. And Fiend, oh, he's getting hit with the team combo here. Daylight down, down, light down air. Oh, and the side stick finish, but he ends up hitting Ailzo for it. If Fiend goes down here, it's tech oh. technically even with stocks. I mean, what? Man, I that was such an insane How? snipe. I I don't know if he like intentionally went for it, if it was the setup, but man, it was so perfectly laser guided. Yeah, Ailzo has been landing a ton of those signatures, but DB and Fiend, oh. they clean up pretty quickly. Elzo and Yuki did a fantastic job coming back, but they just didn't come back hard enough. That's what it felt like. It was like at, yeah. the, at the time where they were starting to do all these really impressive things, well, it's like, yeah, listen, but like you're down. 30 so seconds hard. in, you see yeah. that kind of coverage happen. Right, right, right. It's going to be a hard fight. Oh, and here's the save, right? Oh, okay. So I think that was when Elzo went down after saving Yuki, and then Yuki went down to an unarmed uh, down heavy right afterwards. Yep. But that was fantastic. I can't, honestly, I can't believe that enough force to knock out. Yeah, yeah. Give, what, give what me I, the rewind on that. I need to see that again. The gravity cancel, sword down light into down air, immediately into the waiting hands of Elzo. Oh, man. Sent flying off the right. And now we're on Mammoth Fortress. So we're not having a series on Shipwreck Falls here. Game one goes over to Deviant and Fiend and Ailzo and Yuki are like, nah, enough of that. We've got the Assyrian Caspian coming in for game number two once again. And we'll see how this plays out. As last time, Ailzo and Yuki lost stocks pretty early on. So here we go. Damage build so far pretty even. We're nearing that 30 second mark and nobody's about to get knocked out. So that's better, you know? It's a more stable match than the previous. Ooh, downlight side air, no neutral sig, Ooh. and Ailzo goes off the top. Nice job spot dodging the down air from DB. Weapon throw also dodged out of the way. Okay, DB, that down signature was a little wild, but he doesn't get punished for it. Sider comes through, Fiend with the ground pound, tries to get the down sick. Man, they are just stacking signatures on top of each other there. One's bound to work, and it does, but Yuki. Oh, okay, a little bit of friendly fire, but hey, if it claims the stock, that's yeah. definitely worth. Yeah, putting out the dagger there to be able to secure that stock. Knocks him off to the right. No reversal there on Caspian's guitar kit. So just sends him right off the mm. right side of the stage. Oh, but he spot dodges right into that down sig. Oh, that ground no! Pound. Because the spot dodge was in the down sig, DB was like, this is free. Goes to the ground pound down there, and Ailzo's out so quick. Five stocks to three. Man, it's really just these conversions off stage every time. You cannot be in open air against DB and Fiend. Mm -hmm. They will convert it into a ground pound knockout, and then you're down a stock. Ooh. Nair hitting in from DB. Fiend is still pretty healthy on the second stock. Nice. Ooh. I love that maneuver from Asuri in general. When you pivot the side sig off the platform ah. and you just ride down across the Very stage. Very slick. 
ends up getting that hit in and getting the knockout. Now, three stocks to three. Blue team, once again, they're doing so great at coming back from these deficits at the beginning of the game. Now, I just want to see them not be in the deficit to begin with because it's showing they have the potential to take down DB and Fiend here, but DB and Fiend are just too consistent at the beginning of the match. Yeah, I mean, right now, Fiend has oh. that extra stock. Oh. Almost able to take it out with Caspian's signature there. Ailzo threading the needle back onto stage. Spot dodged against the breakdance just in time. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ailzo tossing Yuki into the perfect position to get hit by his opponents there. Did not want that signature to connect. Side stick hits. Ailzo does get the Yo, double knockout. Double! And it's like... This is, this is the best scenario that Yuki and Elzo have been in so far, and I know they have these rehearsed team combos. I've seen them. It's like Caspian Asuri, specific, using the signatures to be able to get it. Gets the downlight down on the gauntlets. He's got to get it set up. Fiend, however, just has to hit one solid, one clean hit on either opponent to be able to get this to work. Down air sends him underneath the platform. He doesn't pick up the lance again. Oh, is that it? Oh, no. no. They both went for the neutral initiation at the same time. Just a little bit high for the downlight. That damage giving him that arc to get over. Unfortunate. Oh. Just that stole that weapon away in time. Cider hits. Oh, but man, Haymaker, what? How? He's one of the best in the business in 2v1s. He earned himself this 1v1. Now he just needs one strong hit. He's got the weapon to do it. Yuki's looking to cut that short. Be careful, that cat has claws. The neutral oh. signature, an ever-present threat in open air. Oh, he's just nairing, taking the safe route. Spot dodges down. Fiend takes a punish on it. Neutral sig misses. Nair misses Yuki. Okay. Almost gets something with his hole. She's throw. Recovery hits. Yuki's got Fiend disarmed. That could be it. Oh, he oh. was the neutral signature recovery oh and the on arc recovery from Fiend. Takes the game so close. But Yuki and Ailso just can't take game two. It just always feels so much like, you know that, that Greek myth, Tantalus, right? Where I, I you, think you slighted so. the gods and now you're stuck on a little island and there's the most delicious fruit hanging from the tree above you and you reach and the branch just raises the fruit just out of your reach and there's this yeah. delicious water in your thirst you're so parched and you re you lean down and it just the tide recedes away so that way you can't get it it feels like that's what's happening to Elzo wow. and Yuki in every single match it's just out of their reach you know that depiction is a lot more emotional than what I was thinking that. you know and I feel so I'm much feeling it, man. I, this is top I, feel, eight. I feel so much worse for them now after picturing that scenario because that is kind this it is kind of a great description over what just happened in that situ yeah. situation because they went from game number one where it, they brought it back to last stock situation but they were in red and in game number two they did it even further they brought it down to a 2v1 but it was last stock red but fiend i mean out of all players to be in a 1v2 against it's fiend and fiend just makes it happen as they're going in to game number three db and fiend up two to zero let's see i mean yuki and I, I was talking to you about the cwk in game number two they're doing such a great job coming back in these games. We just need to see them not lose the lead at the beginning, right? They at least keep yep. it even, right? At least go one for one on the stocks because they've been losing these leads so early on that when they come back, it's a little too late. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really hoping. I'm pulling for them. I want to see more games out of this. But right now, it's damage lead going the way of DB and Fiend. Positioning going the way of DB and Fiend. Mm. Just where will those first stocks fall? Oh, Elzo tried to oh. punt. I cannot believe it. What Fiend a snipe. in position with the recovery, the ground pound from DB. They're so that's clean. The that's the second ground pound DB's gotten the set, doing such a great job punishing both Elzo and Yuki on the way back to the stage. Weapon picked up by Yuki. Recovery hits, but DB, he's tanky on The Undertaker. Danner comes in, and at this point, Fiend and DB are an extra credit town as they are just trying to get as much damage in. Elzo really putting the charge in there. Doesn't get anything to work out, but DB goes down, and Fiend could follow shortly afterwards. Oh. oh. Really threading the needle back onto stage, getting the damage. DB coming and busting up the potential punish, so Fiend survives to fight again. Ah, commentator's curse, I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, at, at, <laughs> at that point, right, he's, he's got to lose the stock eventually. And now Eventually. We've got DB and Fiend. All right, you know, Elzo and Yuki have kept this as close as I've ever seen it so far in this set. DB goes in with the side air, tries to get that team comp onto Yuki, but oh, oh wow. Oh, I felt oh, that one. Yeah, that, that, the sound effects overlap just right for that, right? The downsing into the down signature from Thor to Olgrim. Yuki, Wait a minute! I, Yuki just got the touch. I can't. That was that was picture. Now perfect. make it worthwhile. Yes, there's the damage. Oh, oh man. Oof. 
DP and Fiend, they're, they're too clean. They are. And now Yuki and Elzo are both one stock away from being knocked out of the tournament at seven. DB and Fiend are certainly coming back with a vengeance after being knocked down to the lower bracket that early on. And now Fiend with an air, putting out those reversal nares, a little bit of friendly fire there, but Yuki and Elzo have got a mountain to climb. Nice neutral light from Elzo. Nair hits Fiend. Okay, if they want to be able to come back here, you take them off stage. They got into the 1v2 before, even though they were deep red, and they aren't really taking that much damage so far. DB yeah. goes down. Oh, this is huge. I mean, we've we've got a shot. Oh, what? Fiend. Went for the gravity cancel neutralite. That's pretty crazy. DB is taking a decent amount of punishment here. Oh, how is Fiend so good at that down sig? Again, the spiking hitbox again. Two ground pounds whiffed. Uh-oh. Ooh, okay. Yuki managing to get his way through. Tagged for a little bit, you know, looking slightly worse for wear. Deep in the red for both Yuki and Aelzo, but they're hanging on, despite being split completely wide across the stage. Oh, Yuki went for the ground pound. Oh, wall slip starting to activate earlier and earlier oh. for them. Okay. Oh I, my god. I, I was go I, I thought that he was gonna survive. Okay, no, there it goes. Ooh. Three stock for DB and Fiend. Yuki and Elzo just aren't quite there to be able to knock down DB and Fiend just yet. But man, did they look good in this tournament? I'm so oh, excited yeah. to see competitive Caspian play in general. And man, am I excited to see them do well even further on into <laughs> into uh, uh, the uh, 2022 esports season. Yeah, I, I mean, seeing myself on the screen there for a second. I, I was I was this close before the tournament started today to putting Yuki and Aelzo as my third place pick. Would have been better than the pick that you actually and did. <laughs> you know what? You say that, yeah. but you How know, could you're you right. Known? You're right. You're absolutely right. I was going to say, not, this would have been too much of a match for like Duke this to is, gloat over this me. This is why you need to make the predictions before Duke makes them. But of course. Oh, you yeah. Know, the you, 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 just, you just got to get in a month ahead of time. That way he has to be the one that doesn't, you know, oh. that, that way he, <laughs> he doesn't have to. Pure clairvoyance, I yes, see. exactly. But uh, now that goes over to Deviant Fiend. Three, two, zero. Lots of three O's. I say lots because there's just two in a row. But it's feeling that way, at least for our block. Really oh, dominant yeah. <laughs> performances as we get further on into this bracket. And Deviant Fiend Jeez. are going to be going up against uh, Vem.